and end, and I'm not exaggerating, about 12.30, quarter to one. So Paul decided, and at every dinner he announced, that he believed that every Greek dinner should end on the same day it begins. <laughs> so as a result, I will be very, very brief. And it's very simply to say, and my wife is a good example of this, you know, all of us, if you think about it, of all of humankind, where they have lived and what circumstances, people who had the opportunity to live in post-World War II America probably have had it about as good as anyone can have it. American society was the most well-educated, the, uh, the most successful, the most powerful. And as you may know, some of you may know, <laughs> In 1970, when I looked at the census data, and the Greeks from Greece were at the very bottom in terms of education and uh, income. And my grandmother is a perfect example. In the village, they didn't send girls to, to school. So not only could she not read English, she couldn't read <coughs> Greek. And yet, like some of your families, she was one of the brightest people I've ever known. She could tell you what to do and what not to do to have a good life. But what happened to me and to my wife, Tina, is we saw this wonderful American society and we enjoyed it, enjoyed it tremendously. But we also saw our Hellenic heritage and the comparison wasn't even close. I'll just give you one small little example out of thousands that makes the case. When Mike started and my son Nick started at Princeton, I learned of a thing called Princeton Clubs. So you can go to any city in America, any major city, and you can go to a Princeton club, and there will be some bright, successful, well-educated, very decent people that you can immediately be with. Well, how many people, other than Greek Americans, can go to any city in this country and immediately surround themselves with, in effect, a Princeton club? So we've all been blessed, and as some people have said, this is a very difficult era we are going into because we are not 100% Greek. But we must remind ourselves that Isocrates, who was a generation before the Socrates, said that being Greek is more a state of mind than of heritage. So if one, somebody is one-fourth Greek or one-half Greek, they can be just as Greek as anyone. And if you look at our prime ministers and our major ship owners, many of them are not 100% Greek. But that's the challenge for all of us. We all have seen this magnificent thing called Hellenism that has made all of our lives so good. That, for example, another small example is the familial relationships that Hellenes have is unprecedented. There's no other people, no other Americans you know. And we all have very similar characteristics. And I'll close by just a silly uh, story that, uh, well, I'll close with two silly stories. Uh, when, when Michael Dukakis was running, Father and Alex and I did it, we said, let's do a little survey to find out what is unique about Greek Americans compared to regular Americans. So I did these questions, and one of the questions were 80% of the Greeks said yes, and yet only 20% of the non-Greeks said yes. And the question was, if the male and female head of household had a disagreement and only one could win, regardless of who would appear to win, would a woman win the majority of the time? 80% of the Greeks said yes. So my, so my Kubato, my Kubato, Telly Manolatos came to dinner and I told him of this survey. I said, you know, Telly, I think it's true. I said, my mother dominated my father, and he said, yes, she did. I said, and your mother really dominated your father. He said, yes, she did. And I said, and, and your wife, Alex, here really dominates you. And he says, yes, she did. And Alex hit him on the shoulder and said, I do not. <laughs> Until he said, oh, she really doesn't, actually. And I pointed out that she had just demonstrated for us what the survey found. The other, and I don't know, I'm just guessing that all of us Hellenes are the same way for this uh, silly story. I'm at the Kennedy Center, it's Reagan presidency, there's some big event, and somebody comes on the stage and said, the president isn't here yet, we're gonna 
haven't filmed this, but it's going to be nationally televised. He said, at some point, you're going to want to applaud, so we will shoot cutaway shots. And everybody applauded. This fellow came on the stage, and he said, look, that's not applause. Now, when I count three, I want to see some real applause. He kind of went to and everybody clapped very hard. And then he said, now, I'm sure you're going to want to do a standing ovation. So when I count three, I want to see a serious, hard standing ovation. And he starts counting one, two, three. And the little Greek in the back of my head said to myself, who is this guy that thinks I'm going to leap to my feet because he's telling me I should stand up and applaud? Now, I'm sitting in a row at the Kennedy Center with about 40 chairs all the way across to the other side. People of every nationality in America leapt to their feet and gave a hard standing ovation. I was still seated. I looked across the Kennedy Center, and there was one person still seated. It was a Greek American who I happen to know. <laughs> so we do have some unique and wonderful qualities as well. But I really, I've got to take off my hat to Cosmos FM, and frankly, to all of the people, my God, the Cypriots, the Ahefans, the, the Greek government officials. There are so many people in this room tonight who are doing exactly what all the rest of us are doing. And it's only that way, if we keep up this great fight, that we will win and survive. Thank you all very much.